That's just been updated. Same numbers, new tombstones. Yeah, nothing different here. Nothing worth talking about. Same here with Palace of the Dead. They just updated it to have the more up-to-date ones. Uncovering the Accursed Horde. So, um, there's new traps available in Palace of the Dead. Looks like Palace of the Dead um, is getting some updates now, but the next 150 floors are for another five weeks after the patch comes out. Uncovering the Accursed Horde, players must remain stationary at the location where the treasure is buried for a fixed period of time for the coffer to be unearthed before the Accursed Horde can be discovered. Players must first use a Pomander of Intuition to reveal its location on the map. So there's one new Pomander and one new location that's available there. Icon graphics have been adjusted. Aetherpool gear strength requirement when joining a matched party has been reduced. Thank God that was annoying as hell. Number of rooms generated on certain floors has been adjusted. Highest attainable upgrade has been... Uh, the highest available upgrade for Aetherpool gear by determined determined by player level has been reduced, so you can get upgrades more easily. Uh, the number of enemies to defeat the, to get the Carn of Passage and Carn of Return have been reduced, so you don't have to defeat as many enemies. I mean, Soul Wing Palace of the Dead is a little easier now. Traps and Mines now affect nearby enemies when triggers. Oh! Oh! That's, that adds a new element. That adds a new... Because if you're going in with a group, you're like, oh shit, look at this group of enemies here. There's a pacification trap on the ground right there. Do you want me to lure them all to the pacification trap? I'll be pacified, and then, I, we can, and then you guys can just kill them? I like it. I kind of like that. It adds a new element of uh, of strategy and thought. Not that it was necessary, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the idea. I'm okay with the idea. Uh, they adjusted the strength of Voidfire 2 and Pummel, which is two of the uh, commanders we had before. Number of experience points has been increased when defeating enemies inside, not when you exit and you get all the experience. So it just makes leveling inside a Palace of the Dead quicker, like to actually complete it. Chance of discovering a treasure coffer with Pomanders of Fortune have been increased. Good, because it barely felt like it was working before. The chance that certain enemies will drop a treasure coffer has been increased. And the interface when speaking to the Wood Whaler has been adjusted, so it looks even more fancy. Way more fancy. Holy moly. That's way too fancy. I can't handle it. A tally for party KOs will now be available as well. So if you've wiped, it will count. And it will embarrass you. Sad face. Display of a save window has been adjusted. Yeah, I mean, we could see that from this, but thank you. Anyway. A save UI data will now reflect changes in party composition when the player has disconnected before the party leaves the instance. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's got the little red dot thing. Oh, man. On that note, uh, Stone Sky Sea, all of the... Uh, all the new Extreme and Savage encounters, as well as Normal Mode Alexander the Creator, have all been added. And they have also added the accuracy requirements that match the raid requirements. So people who aren't in A12 Savage, probably, as soon as they unlock Savage, well, I don't know, You do you need to... Mm, you probably need to be on A12. Yeah, you need to be on A12 Savage before you can probably check the Soul of the Creator accuracy cap. In which case, you're probably already trying to figure it out. At least you don't need to be in the raid to figure it out. Some diadem changes, um, new exploratory missions have been added, uh, diadem hunting grounds easy, and the diadem hunting grounds when it's selecting exploratory mission. Uh, these are exclusive to Disciples of War and Magic. Disciples of Land must choose from the original exploratory mission. So these are strictly for fighting in the diadem, uh, these cues. So that's a good thing to have. Role restrictions when matching players to join the original exploratory missions have been removed. Parties registering to enter the hunting grounds with less than eight players must adhere to the standard composition of one tank, two healers, and five DPS. How uh, could tombstones received when completing mission objectives have been changed? Okay, just updated. That's fine. Gear obtained from treasure coffers have been changed. Have been changed. In addition to item level 180 and 210 gear, players will now be able to also find I-235 gear. That's nothing major, but I guess if it gets people who are trying to catch up in the game into the diadem, it, that's okay. But that's if they decide to use it like that. So we'll, we'll see how that people end up deciding to use it, if at all, the diadem. Dueling's been added. The ability to 1v1 people. You just have to be in the PvP encounter area in the Wolves' Den. There's the dueling location. You just teleport there and walk over and bam, start challenging people with duels. 1v1, there's no time limit, there's no, while level sync and item level sync are not utilized, materia and morale bonuses will not be applied during duels either. Certain beneficial effects will also be cancelled, that's probably like if you were buffed before the 1v1 match by like a white mage or something, those will automatically be removed. Right click, ask for duel, it gives you the information that you need, 240 versus item level, it gives you the item level, the job, the level, all that stuff. Time remaining to accept the duel, and then it gives you a unique icon when you're engaged in duel. And then when you, it gives you a different display for you and your opponent. Okay. Let's see. 
Custom matches have been added. So yeah, you can uh, you can do custom matches to initiate four on four or eight v eight private mas matches. You can also invite players to spectate up to eight spectators to uh, to watch the match. The rules are the same. Rules of engagement are the same as those in the regular. Item level sync is the same. You, there's even a rematch button for if you want to do like best out of five. That's pretty nice for custom matches. Uh, following chat channels are available during custom matches. Uh, so you can actually talk in party, free company, link shell, novice network, and shout. Both combatants and spectators can freely use the above mentioned chat channels. That's nice. Um, also pertains to communication with players outside the instance. So that's good. That means that you're not restricted to your actual chat channel usage during custom matches. Okay, that's acceptable. Now we just need to get it in the rest of the game, and we're good to go. Uh, registering for custom matches. A 4-on-4 four four match will require two players. Yeah, okay. I, I don't think we really need to explain how to queue into something in the Duty Finder, do we? Spectator mode has been added. If you've ever watched any sort of esports or sport or any sort of event where somebody watches somebody play something else, it's pretty much the same, bunch of different cameras, stats of each team on, on each side, a scoreboard, and the time remaining. So I don't think I need to explain too much. There's free cameras, fixed cameras, player cameras, all that good stuff, and it's just giving you the keybinds right here. Team Claw, Team Fang. Luckily, we can skip through most of this because we definitely... Oh, wow, that's a, those are really weird camera positions considering there's only one... There's only two cameras that show the entire arena, but uh, acceptable as long as I have... The player cameras, that's really all that matters to me. Current rating. Following notification will appear at the end of the match in the feast. Your rating has changed. Ooh, that's really, ooh, that's fancy. Fancy and satisfying. Promotion qualifier available. One victory out of the five possible matches. Names displayed in the match progress window when defeating enemies during the feast will now be affected by changes made to display name settings. Yeah, see, this is the kind of stuff I just never apply. Apply current display name settings. Changes to display name settings. Well, interface will now affect the display of names on the result screen. Oh, so you can choose to, you can choose whether or not you want to see the names. Okay. New items have been added. We have Alexander the Creator gear. We have the Charlene gear, the Tombstone gear. We have items that can now be crafted without specialization. Pretty much everything that did have specialization before now no longer has specialization. Pretty much expected. Spoils Trader can now be found in the Diadem and in the Residential District. New items available for exchange. Uh, number of spoils received has been reduced from 2 to 1 and from 3 to 2 for the old gear. Item level 160 will remain at the rate of 1 per exchange. Okay, that's fine. And, uh, okay, that's fine. There's new items. New items are available from the residential caretaker. What else do we got here? Uh, following items are no longer available from Perdana and must be purchased from the residential caretaker NPC in the uh, residential districts. Okay, so you need so you can get the Zuhorn and the Expeditioner's Cap using Iron Voyage or Copper Voyage spoils. Interesting. Following item names have been changed. I get it. Storm Officer instead of Lieutenant. I get it because they added First Lieutenant, so it was kind of confusing. I get it. Appearance of the following items have been adjusted. Ethereal Mithril Branded Carbine. That thing looks pretty sick. I'm not going to lie. I like the look of that thing. And the Cobalt Barreled Carbine also had its uh, thing adjusted. Also, it had its icon adjusted, as well as some of these seeds. Help text. I'm going to need another sip of coffee here in a second. Okay. Order of item shops has been changed. Players can now specify the number of items to be exchanged. Thank God. Duration of weakness when revived with these items has been changed to two minutes. Okay, that's acceptable. Don't use it too often. You can now discard yokai watches. Thank you. I've never wanted to get rid of an item so bad. Falling... <laughs> Items can no longer be sold. Realm Reborn Red pinwheels. Okay, help text for falling. Items have been adjusted. The Icarus Wings. Uh, those are great items, aren't they? Uh, new items are available for exchange. These are for... Have been made to the inventory of his main item. Well, 200 gear is no longer available for purchase because esoterics are gone. Again, this is just updating the... Uh, because the tombstones are being updated, it's changes to an NPC that sold tombstone gear. Um, they're also nerfing the cost for things like Gobcraft Resin, Icon Mithrite, all the old, all the old materials that were, uh, the, the esoteric materials, those are all being changed, just reduced. And also, they are no longer esoterics, they're all Tomestones of Lore, and it's less Tomestones of Lore to buy them. Okay. Uh, Illuminati Gob Twine. Whoa, okay. Number, pfft. you only need one, alright, well I guess that's fine. One Clan Mark Log and one for either an Illuminati Gobtwine or Gobcoat. Hey, that works. So you can get your upgrades 
uh, to get to the current relevant item level a little faster. I guess if you have, uh, S I'm sorry, lore tombstones left over, you can do it with that. New items are available from Smacklix, Oriana. And you can buy some new items with Centurio seals. That's where you're going to get your esoteric gear and also the Illuminati items in case you need to up upgrade uh, lore gear at all. Dome and Whetstones, these are Centurio seals. They're just being reduced again because these are for really old items at this point. And then even some of the uh, Centurio seals for item level 170 stuff has been reduced. So if, you get, if you're getting Centurio level, uh, seals while leveling up, doing those uh, hunt marks, the ones that like the tier 1, 2, and 3 that you unlock in Heaven's Ward, well, it's getting a little easier to at least have some I-170 gear waiting for you when you hit level 60. Also, following uh, items have been added to the inventory of the Recompense Officer. Oh, the Legacy Warrior stuff. Perfect. Oh, and the Yokai Watch. <sighs> okay. Mended Imperial Pot Helm. Mended Imperial Short. I'm sorry. Yes, those were Illuminati. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Anyway, upgrade Esoteric Gear. All that fancy stuff. Calamity Salvager has Mended Imperial Pot Helm and the Short Robe. New items are available for Script Exchange. New items are available for Script Exchange and Revenant's Toll and Idleshire. Level cap for Desynthesis has been increased to from 220 to 250, and the combined from 680 to 770. Following items can now be sold. These other sites are submitted for ex expert delivery missions, Sephiroth gear, PvP gear, lore gear, Maiden gear, all the gear from last patch, essentially, from 3.2 and 3.3. New gathering locations, new items to gathering points, following items now easier to obtain, topsoils and the seeds that we were mentioning before. New big fish have been added to Ishgard areas, now easier to catch a gnome fish. Players can no longer obtain treasure maps. When using the action snagging in the following areas, I'm assuming this has something to do with big fish or quality of life fishing thing where people catch uh, maps by accident when they're snagging as opposed to when they want to catch something else. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, patience and Patience 2 will remain in effect until the current cast is finished, even if their timers have expired, so it can't wear off mid-cast. The material melding window will now display the maximum parameters of an item. We have the technology. No more questions about what stat caps are. It's in the game. Base the OCP. Thank you so much. Oh, you. You are a beautiful human being. Oh, man. Oh, I need another sip of coffee. I need to I need to ingest this. Hold on. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. Thank you. Okay, new Chocobo Barding has been added. Oh, that thing's sexy as hell. Look at that thing. New mounts have been added. That's the Sophia mount. These minions come from Wondrous Tales. I know this minion comes from Wondrous Tales. I'm assuming this one does as well. Um, system changes, these are achievements, back in time, mob squad for your, for your squadrons, triple decker, obtaining more unique triple triad cards, 135 varieties of fish, more unique music roles, completing Sophia, Zelfatol, Gabal, Alexander, Alexander Savage, discover every area within Alexander, successfully complete wondrous tales, 50 times, dude, that's a, this is a one year achievement, and Chloe was her name Oh hate you again successfully complete 50 series of one that's a one year achievement that's two weeks shy of being a one year time consuming achievement better get to it discover a piece of the accursed horde uh these are things inside of uh jesus christ these are things inside of palace of the dead um without using a pomander of intuition oh that's right because okay be, you know, the Pomander of Intuition lets you see Accursed Hordes, but you can still technically get them without. You would just need to stand still in the spot you think has an Accursed Horde. That's pretty crazy. I'm just saying. It won't be long before people figure out all the potential spawn locations for that achievement. Okay. For, and it's also for the Horde. Thank you for the World of Warcraft achievement name. Uh, following duties will count towards high-level full-party achievements. That's the tank mounts, by the way. All of it. You know those things? All those things. All those things now count. Holy moly. Uh, the following additions have an adjustment of a major retainer ventures. Uh, now yields 5 to 10 of the indicated item for those topsoils, for these topsoils. Unaspected crystals, 1 to 5 of the indicated item. Dark matter clusters, 3 to 7. Um, and the players can now use subcommands when targeting the reward received. New rare items can be obtained from quick exploration ventures. Players can now access a camera setting interface when in the group pose an idling camera. Oh, that's right. Now you can actually like check things. Limb darkening, uh, depth of field, 
color filters, like legit selfie, full selfie mode right now, full camera selfie mode. Common settings, look at those filters. Denmo, get to work, man. I want to see some beautiful, beautiful pictures from you, Denmo. Okay. Players can adjust frame composition. Uh, adjusting frame composition, this is how you do it. Resetting frame composition, you can do it right here. Uh, camera switching feature will now detect players when emotes are talking to animations within the camera angle parameter. Uh, following additions and adjustments have been made to group pose. Camera lighting has been added. Camera lighting off. Camera lighting on. Camera lighting has been... Man, fuck lore, man. We got cameras and shit now. Uh, players can now pause character motions while using group poses. Okay. There's a lot of camera related stuff here that I will probably never touch. Players can now temporarily hide the UI elements during cutscenes. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. Because you know how sometimes things pop up and it's like, it's like, oh, I'm watching this really intense cutscene. Full of Source Rex has gone offline. Shut the fuck up. Your retainer venture has returned. Shut up. You're ruining my immersion. You're ruining everything. Following effects will no longer be displayed when toggling UI effects. It won't show you zone lines. Okay. Effects indicating a border between zones will no longer be shown. That's interesting. Effects indicating a plot land has yet to be purchased. Okay. Those are those are those are interesting. And gardening category has been added to the market board under housing. Indicator for north on the minimap has been adjusted to be much more noticeable because people don't know how to compass. Uh, a countdown function has been added. You can set a countdown, and it'll pop up on the screen in giant letters. See? Battle commencing in 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Start. Now you get to know those tanks that pull on 2. You'll know. Players can no longer initiate trades with players casting a spell. Mew, I'm so sorry. They nerfed your greatest skill. Sorry. The online status role-playing has been added. RP. RP. Very self-explanatory. The order in which gear and accessories are displayed, and keep in mind the whole zone disappearing thing, you have to toggle that, just to be clear. Um, order in which gear and accessories are displayed in the uh, armoire, chest, and the character and retainer, attribute windows, and the market board have been adjusted to match NPC shop listings. The order of the left and right ring have been reversed. And then the, it's earring, then choker. Thank God, that annoyed the hell out of me. That annoyed the ever-loving hell out of me that it was like that before. Uh, the precision of the algorithm for determining an optimal shield via the re recommended gear feature has been adjusted. W cross hopper has been added. I'm not going to read this for very long. Essentially, it allows you to double tap left trigger or right trigger to get access to extra hop bars. I don't want to say anything else. That's all it is. Double tap left trigger or right trigger to get access to extra hop bars. That's all you're going to explain to you. Uh, let's see. Actions and traits has been adjusted. Main commands are down here. Okay, that's pretty nice. I like that they're down there and no longer taking up everything else. Uh, additions. Ooh, I like that. It actually, that's for that's really good for new players to explain when they get their additional actions. Okay, that little bit of information is useful. Is really useful to new players. Um, sound effect will play when party members join or leave the party in open world areas. Camera speed uh, has been adjusted. Maximum speed has been increased 1.5 times, so you can make the camera go even faster. Clock type setting uh, has been adjusted. You can freely choose any combination of times. You can show Aorzean local and server time. You can display all three of them if you want. Uh, Tooltip has now been added when selecting status effects in the log window. Okay, that's that's nice. That's nice. I like that. At this point, I'm trying to... I'm just, okay, you can right-click report RMT activity. We did it. <laughs> we fucking did it, guys. Uh, I'm so going to get reported for doing absolutely nothing. Anyway, uh... New options are available in the interface. This is they do this stuff every time, and I almost never read it. Enable toggling between NQ and HQ text. There's different toggle buttons. HUD, overhead name display. You can uh, see those now. Target full information. Uh, the cross hot bar transparency when not in use. You can make it more or less transparent now. Same with the double cross hot bar. You can choose to always display it. Uh, you can choose to not display it. You can choose to have an input timer for it. Uh, enable, this is just to let you know the double cross hotbar exists. Same in PvP settings, it has its own uh, PvP settings that are separate, so keep that in mind. Default uh, for draw quality is changed from normal to high on the PlayStation 4, so the PlayStation 4's default is higher than it used to be. Character configuration, interface is supposed to be reviewed tab, new options are available in the keybind interface, okay. I probably for the double cross, I don't know, for something. Uh, short, oh, here we go, countdowns, system, 
Uh, so you can you can keybind countdowns and switch HUD layouts and log window zoom. Those are the new things you can keybind. A search function has been added to the active help window, which is I, useful. It is. DualShock 4 controllers are now supported on the Windows version. Big thumbs up. New text command, slash orchestrian, slash countdowns, which you can also do slash CD. Dual switch, uh, cross hotbar display, uh, face palm, <laughs> flex, respect, sneer. And there's new macro placeholders, target job, class, and focus class, focus job. Okay. That's pretty cool. I like it. Display the class or job name of your focus target. All right. I like it. I like it. New phrases have been added. Oh, is there any phrases we can make fun of? Any really good ones? Dual. Okay. No. Nope. Nope. None of these are great for, for laughing. Other than the role-playing one, which I'm surprised took them that long. Beyond time. I guess those things could be... Uh, can be used. New music has been added. Hyphens can now be used in character and retainer names. Character selection screen will now display your remaining days of playtime. And unfortunately, because it's preliminary patch notes, we don't get the actual items and item levels of the stuff until Monday. That was a hell of a long reading, guys, and I expected it to be probably about an hour of a video. Can't wait to upload this to YouTube later. It's essentially a full... I might break it down into like three parts so it's a little bit more digestible, but we'll see what we want to do. Uh, if we're going to wrap that up for the YouTube recording, overall my thoughts are there's a lot of very interesting changes here. I'm most intrigued by the changes to Astrologian. I think most of us will be, as well as how difficult Alexander the Creator Savage will be in terms of its gear scaling. The mechanics might be okay in terms of difficulty, but it looks like its gear scaling, how much gear is needed to beat it, has been pushed back drastically compared to Gordius and Midas. So really intrigued to see how quickly it's beaten. With that reveal, I say less than a week. I say a five-day estimation like Yoshi P gave is incredibly accurate because you'll. I just don't see the need for to wait two weeks for a weapon. You know, that's just that's that's just how I see it. We'll see if I'm wrong. Let me know what your predictions are. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share uh, for the YouTube part. I'm still live on Twitch, though, so we're going to start playing some Final Fantasy XIV and discuss these patch notes because I'm sure a lot of you have questions, my thoughts, going in more, if there's anything I missed that you wanted me to talk about. I'm sure I'll get plenty of that during the live stream itself. Everyone on YouTube, thank you for watching Twitch. Let's continue the show. We'll see you next time on YouTube, though. Take care.